Okay, I see it is officially 11, so we can definitely kick off. Uh, good morning, everyone. Happy Friday, and welcome to my first live webinar of 2022. It's quite uh, crazy that it's uh, this late in the year. It has been uh, quite a busy time for me with a lot of travel, training, and implementation across uh, Africa. So I'm glad that we could all make it here today. And we are going to be continuing from what we had stopped on last year, being part five uh, called looking at the topic of water design. Of course, I am your speaker for today. I am Shuev Yunus. I am the BIM Technical Specialist for Civil Infrastructure and Mining here at Baker Bains in South Africa. You can see those are all of my credentials. I'm a civil design consultant, a keynote speaker. I've, I'm an image candidate, a learning content developer. I mean, uh, I got quite a lot of titles under my belt, uh, but the main thing is that at Baker Benz, I'm involved in numerous projects involving BIM for civil infrastructure, uh, GIS, so geographic information systems, CDEs or common data environments, reality capture, scan to BIM, as well as virtual reality and visualization. And of course, if you would like to reach out to me directly, you could pop me an email at shuaib at bakerbains.com. Now, when it comes to the company that I work for, there's a quick one slider as to who we are and what we do. Uh, we believe that we solve our customers' problems through digital transformation, helping them to design and make a better world. And in order to do that, we partner with a lot of different cool, innovative technologies that we believe in. And we specialize in four main core segments. So whether it's uh, business process improvement consulting, survey and design, you can see that we're partnered with Leica at the moment. Uh, very, very hot topic on the scan to boom type of an arena. If you're in the reality capture and you would like to have a chat, Again, I'll have my details at the end. You can always reach out to me directly. Uh, when it comes to design, software, and consultancy, you can see that we're partnered with very, very big brands. I mean, I'm sure you all know Autodesk. IDAS, which has been a fantastic tool. I've been showcasing it throughout this entire um, for Civil Infrastructure Development webinar series. And of course, uh, we've got partnering with Cool Orange, which is fantastic on the data management side and manufacturing. And of course, Clear Edge 3D, looking at point cloud geometry extraction. It's a really, really amazing. Also, we've got a lot of uh, different accreditations and stuff like that. But if you're looking at getting upskilled, we do offer classroom and virtual training. So whichever way it swings, uh, depending on how COVID is and stuff like that, we can go the virtual route if it's all good. Of course, in classroom is my favorite. We are, of course, an Autodesk authorized training center. And of we have a really, really amazing tool called CAD Learning. I will touch on that at the end, but basically it's an online tool with a lot of the pre-recorded classes in a variety of Autodesk software that you can learn 24 seven and upskill on the go. It's definitely something that a young professional should have as well as a seasoned professional to keep you upskilling and keeping up with technology. So if you are joining this series for the first time, let me give you some uh, background as to what's happening or how this came to be. Of course, this is a six part webinar series. and It was looking at a variety of different components required to design a civil infrastructure development. So if you're doing maybe a real estate development or something of that sort, there's a lot of different civil components that form part of it. And in this webinar series, we've looked at site, roads, stormwater, sewer, today water, and then design visualization. On the right hand side, you will see that we've got a lot of different technologies. The ones that are in the red rectangle are the hero products of this webinar series being InfraWorks, Civil 3D, and IDAS. We've used them quite extensively thus far. And with the technologies outside of the box, we'll see, I might bring in some files in probably part six that have been created in these software to show you that you can integrate them, especially when it comes to design visualization. 
Okay, so now that you have a quick uh, overview as to what's happening, again, do not forget uh, to please subscribe to our Baker Bay's YouTube channel. This webinar, as well as all of our webinars held by our technical specialists, are uploaded to our Baker Bay's YouTube channel. So if you are interested in the recording or going and watching the series that you have missed, by all means, they all are there. So subscribe, like, and as soon as this one is uploaded, you will get a notification as as long as you turn it on so please uh, do check it out really really cool free content there and if you by chance see any of our webinars coming up and you cannot attend do register anyway so that when the recording is uploaded you get notified all right so again i will be posting this on linkedin as well when the recording is up and you can tag your buddies that couldn't make it here today all right, so the formalities out of the way, let's look at today's session. So all of my webinars, I start off with a perspective. I don't just go straight in. You need to understand what you're doing and why you are doing it. Then we will jump into the meat of the presentation or the webinar, looking at BIM for civil infrastructure development, particularly water design. And then we're gonna go with the closing. So any key takeaways we're going to cover, how we're going to help you, very important. And since we are live today, we will have a Q&A. So please shoot your questions in the chat box. I will get to them at the end. You don't have to wait till the end. So if anything pops up in your mind, either relative to the topic or maybe you feel I could answer it, please use the chat box and I will address all of your questions at the end. So let's start off with the industry perspective. What challenges are faced when it comes to civil infrastructure or also known as municipal engineering? Now let's take the infographic on the right hand side as an example. Let's say we were designing something of that sort, right? Let's look at what type of challenges we would probably face. The first one, it is gonna be very complex. So design complexity. And with multiple civil elements, design can get messy. I mean, if you've got all of those infrastructure within that close vicinity, you would need to design it very, very carefully and really very well thought of. Coming to complexity, which goes hand in hand, is the coordination of your design, ensuring that all involved is on the same page. I always use this example. You probably have heard this example many times. It's the old feud between the structural engineer and the architect, uh, struggling to keep up to which one is the latest revision or whatever of that sort. Ensuring that everyone's on the same page, especially when it comes to a project that is very complex is critical, right? Because that normally leads to very, very nasty construction variation orders and even legal action uh, sometimes. When it comes to you, the designer, collaboration is a very, very big part and sharing and incorporation of the latest design data is absolutely crucial. You need to ensure that everyone has the latest data, they're working off the latest drawing, uh, all of the information gathered is now being applicable and nothing is left out. And you need to share those files with your fellow uh, professionals in your consortium. So, You'll have a structural engineer, you'll have a civil engineer, you might have a roads engineer, stormwater, you'll have mechanical, electrical, plumbing, architecture, the QS, quantity surveyor. You need to share and collaborate effectively. And when you're working on a big project, I mean, it is quite, quite cumbersome if you do not have the correct processes. Speaking about processes and collaboration, the next one is technology. You do need to have the right technology uh, to accomplish the task that you need. You cannot take a car that is, uh, well, a class A car and take it onto a Formula One track. You're not gonna get the same results, right? So please, you do need the correct technology because it's a critical uh, measure that you need. It's compulsory so that you can achieve what you need to. And last but not least, it's design visualization. I mean, uh, had so many meetings already this year and visualization has come up so many times where it's translating the technical engineering to something that's simple visual and 
easy to understand. Majority of you on this call here today, which I'm very pleased with the attendance, is that you might be very technical, you can read a drawing quite easily off the bat, but generally the people that are funding it or are the capital behind the project are not really technical. So they would like to see the picture on the right hand side. So this one as to what their money is getting them. That's literally what they want to see. They're not interested in your calculations. That's your responsibility. So translating the design intent to something that's very visual and appealing is critical. So these are the main challenges that I've picked up over my uh, conversing with a lot of professionals throughout Africa and abroad. So now that you understand the challenges, we can jump right into it, get nice and deep in there. BIM for civil infrastructure development, and we can look at water design. So let's have a quick recap from part one to four. Again, for those that have probably missed it or are joining for the first time, I always uh, put this in there. So let's see what has happened. I created a design brief, uh, that's something that you would normally get in engineering, in a consulting office, uh, where the location of the site is, what you need to do, and so on. Uh, again, I changed the location in South Africa. I think the one before this, I was in Cape Town. So this one, I said, I will come to Wazulu Natal. And you can see it is in Belito. And we've got, or we've been appointed to do the development in that area. And we are in charge of delivering all of those that are listed on your screen. So we did cover site design in part one. We did the road design in part two, which a lot of you were very impressed. Stormwater design had a little bit, uh, I think people didn't realize how much of detail you could go in, so they were fascinated. Sewer design was just quite easy. That was the recorded one. And today we're going live and we're looking at the water design. And of course, you can see after that, part six will be on design visualization. Definitely join that one. It's going to be quite an eye gasm if I call it that. And today, we're going to be using BIM technologies to do water design. So all of the topics that we've covered, we've used smart or BIM technologies to help you design much more better. So let us continue on our project. And we're going to start off with converting polylines, or polylines, however you would like to pronounce it, to generate the water network. Now, generally, looking at the workflow applied in a consulting environment, uh, if there's a draftsman to engineer type of flow, you would normally do, or the draft person will put in the, the polyline into where they want the water network to look like, uh, based on what the engineer tells them. And the engineer will normally take that and use it for an anal analysis or something like that. Or you could do it directly. I mean, there's so many different options right now. So I'm going to stick with the most common one being using a polyline to generate a water network. Now, as you can see on my screen, I've got those that thick cyan line representing the water network. It's a polyline. And you can see I've had created a layer for it where I could toggle it off quite easily. And you can see it is switched off. And I can put it back on. So that is normal, a normal AutoCAD polyline. And you can see it's going to be uh, linking in from there. And this is how you can see the polylines have been generated. Remember, you still need to check if the vertices are broken. I covered this quite uh, extensively in the previous parts. So you would still need to ensure that it is. But let me just yeah, show you where it is. It actually is in map cleanup, where you would extend or break crossing lines. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the IDAS tab, and we're going to select the reticulation water wizard. Okay. Now, this is where you can give your network a name. I will just be lazy and I will call it water. I like it in caps, so let me just put that. There we go. And you need to select your correct reference surface. You can see there's a lot of surfaces because of the roads. And of course, you can go and select your parts list. Now, this is a very big advantage of using IDAS because of the catalogs as well and the analytical engine in Civil 3D. And as you can see, there is a long list of structures or types that you can select i'm going to go and select the junction when it comes to pipes again we have a long list of catalogs that you can use 
you can see fluoride, gin law, Mali is quite popular as well. I mean, you get the idea. Um, you can even go to Rockla, we've got Sands, we've got so many that you can leverage off that are used in South Africa that are pretty, pretty popular. Okay, so do have a scroll along here. Chances are you will find the pipe network that you would like to use. I'm going to maybe use Mali for this one because it is quite well known. And I will process only the entities in the AutoCAD layer that I created. So you can see uh, I've selected the water line, a water polyline layer. I can erase it if I want to. I can insert a minimum structure distance. I'm not going to do that. But I'm sure you've also noticed that this is not a separate model. When I went to layers, there was one for stormwater, meaning that you can do all of the networks in the same drawing. It will get a bit large. Uh, so just bear that in mind, depending on the extent of your site. But anyway, I select the polylines and I hit enter. And let's zoom in and see if anything happened. Now, it might be a bit difficult to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch off this uh, layer, right? So I switched it off and let's see. And if we zoom in, you can see the pipe network has now been generated just in a few clicks. So we literally drew the network. We're using a polyline. We then converted it using the IDAS reticulation wizard based on the pipe diameter and structures that we had selected. So that is quite easily done. Now, if we continue here, so you can see again, there's the structure. If I select that, you will see on the top, if I go to structure properties, it will give me the name, all right? I can change it. Remember in the previous uh, series or the previous parts, renaming of the structures are quite recommended, but if you don't want to go that route, you don't have to. It just makes life much more cleaner. Of course, I can go and swap that structure as well. So let's say I want to change it to, to maybe uh, wherever it is tapping in from. For example, uh, let's scroll down and see what we can use at the start, right? Because this is a water network. So let's see if I will find what I want. Again, this will just be a symbol. I could use a reservoir, which is normally the case. Um, but what I will do is, let's see, because we are doing a development, let me scroll up. I'm looking for a specific structure. Just give me a second. I'm probably missing it by eye at the moment. There we go. Connect to existing or connect to an existing system. Sometimes you might find, based on development, you might need to tap into an existing system. Uh, but that is a very tricky thing based on the, on the supply, the pressure, and so on. But anyway, let's assume that we are tapping into an existing system, right? That is just saying that one of these surfaces are out of date, so ignore that. And when I hit OK, you will see now the structure actually updates. Okay, so quick and easy. No problem swapping structures. You've seen it quite a bit throughout this series. Okay, and we go to the structure properties. I can rename it. You can see it's saying connecting to existing water system. I could give it a name if I wanted to, and I could update that part so I know that this is connecting to an existing system. All right, so we've got our pipe network in, and we've got our existing system in. All right, let's see what else we can do. All right. Okay, so I've got that there. Um, I can also, if I wanted to, I could have deleted that if I made a mistake. That's why I added that extra length to show you that you don't have to delete the entire network if you do make a mistake. But what if you wanted to add a branch? So let's say I want that back. So what all I got to do is I can go and select the structure that I want if I wanted to and also the pipe diameter. Now, in this case, you will see, I can select whether I want pipes and structures, pipes only, or structures only, right? So if I only wanted to insert a pipe, I could, but what I'll do is I will hover through to that junction. You can see 
that that snap will appear. Once you see that symbol, they can then click and it will connect it to the existing system. I can then bring down my pipe. And when I click there, you will see that it will insert the structure at the end and I can hit escape. Now, what I have essentially done is I've added another pipe or another branch to an existing network. That's why I had deleted it initially. If I move it, you can see all of the pipes are connected to the structure. If you, for some reason, when you do move it and it's disconnected, so let's say this pipe is here and I need it to connect to the structure. I have to wait until I see that orange symbol. You see that one there? Once I see it and I click, it will now be connected, right? So let's see, if I move that pipe, you can see it is disconnected. If I move it back, as soon as I come close to it, you can see now it is connected. If you move any of the structures or the pipes and they move independently, that means you did not connect it correctly. So please make sure that you do. Um, you can also add different other structures. So for example, you can see, I can also set a junction if I'd like. I can go and set whether I want to insert only structures and maybe I want to add a junction or a manual somewhere there. Again, I have to wait until I see that symbol. I can even go and add a fire hydrant if I'd like, right? which is normally the case with this type of retics. And if I click there, it will simply add a structure. So it's very, very easy. You can see it says fire hydrant. Uh, we can adjust the display of that structure if we'd like. And if I didn't want it, I could simply delete it. So I can simply select structure and I can select the pipe to keep. Now you can see currently that pipe has been split. It has a line in between it. So what we could do is I could either delete one pipe or I could delete a structure. I could grade a pipe. I could use any one of those functions there that could sort this out. The easiest one is I could either swap apart, I can try and merge a network if needed, or I could say connect. Now you can see it's gonna ask me to select the structure I want to connect to, I can go there. And as you can see, it has connected it. Now, a lot of users make this mistake because when you do connect it, the pipe on the other end still is there. So you would need to delete it. And now you would see there is only one pipe. So I thought I'll put that in because I've seen that quite a bit. Uh, for some reason, a lot of people are doing pipe networks at the moment. And I picked up that mistake where once you use the connect function, they forget about the initial pipe. So again, edit pipe network is a very, very easy tool that you could use and you could go and customize it based on your uh, requirement. Again, if you want to in insert a structure, you simply wait for that signal or that symbol you click where you want it to and it will insert, all right? So again, the methodology is quite simple. If I went to go to IDAS and if I go to delete structure, which is an easier one, I could delete the structure and in the command line, it will ask me to select the pipe to keep. And all I gotta do is select the pipe and you will see now there is only one pipe and I do not have to worry about deleting the other one. So you can see IDAS has a really cool option. I've just moved that pipe to show you that there isn't anything behind there. So the functions that are brought to Civil 3D using IDAS are quite brilliant. So I thought I'll show you some modeling techniques. I hope that worked for you, uh, especially if you are using the pipe networks in Civil 3D on their own. You can clearly see the advantage using IDAS because uh, Civil 3D on its own can be a bit more cumbersome uh, to achieve these tasks. Now the next step or the thing that normally gets everyone uh, very excited is generating the long sections of the profile views for the water network. Now I'm going to just do one of them because these steps are quite repetitive and I've covered this quite a bit in I think the part three and part or part three and part four, yeah? So let's see. So let's say I um, I want to do the long section for this pipe, but for a pipe network, you really need an alignment and you can see there is no line or center line in that pipe network. So all I'll do is I'll click on the beginning of that branch 
and I want to have the long section ending at this structure there. And as you can see, it has highlighted all of the parts between those two points. If it does not highlight, that means that you need to connect some of the parts they were, you didn't click correctly. Now, all I'm going to do is, again, thanks to the great template created by DevTech for the Civil 3D environment, I can go and select the type of style that I would want to use for the alignment. I think major and center line meters will work pretty good. And I will tick the create profile and profile view. Again, you can see the number of surfaces I've had here because we have literally been building this model as we're going along. I can then go and select a type of style. Honestly, it doesn't really matter at this stage. But I will go and see. Uh, I've got the pipe water style. So pipe water level and structures. Again, these are normal commands that will normally pop up every now and then. I can switch off and on whichever pipes or structures I would like to see or don't want to see. And again, I will go and select a band set. Remember, a band set displays all of the elevation data that is required for your long section, be it a road, be it a pipe network. Very, very important. So here we are, we can then go and click create profile view and I can go and drop it somewhere on my screen. You can see the long sections on the right in the red rectangle are for my roads, so they're not for the pipes. And as you can see, the long section has now been created. So let's zoom in and you can see this is the result, right? I'm not too happy with this, something doesn't look right, as you can see. I uh, probably made a mistake with my modeling. Uh, let's keep on going. Now, how do we fix this? We don't really need to delete this off the bat. We could use IDAS for that, right? But we would have to repeat this for each network branch. And you can see in just a few clicks again, the long section is that pretty, pretty easy. Now, how do we fix that? Let's have a look. So, this is what we have. If I select the pipe network, you can see that is the platform where it slopes down and then it joins into the natural ground level. But that looks very wrong. Again, that is also like in line with the ground. I need it to be within a certain cover depth. And for that, IDAS has a function called adjust invert. So all you've got to do is select your network. And I want to adjust the entire network based on my surface. And I can decide how much lower I want it to be. So let's say the cover, um, let's go with one, let's see how it looks. And I want to use the cover value for that. And I want it to be below the surface. So one meter below the surface. Again, that is a bit low, but let, anyway, let's see. Or not that low, let's see. And once we hit okay, you should see the long section does update. Now, you can see again on the right hand side, the pipe network looks pretty fine, right? Because it has adjusted accordingly. As you can see here, that cover is great. I'm fine with that if I needed one meter. But as I come towards the left, you will see uh, there's a problem. Now, you can see the structures for or the symbolism for junction is a very small circle because we don't really need to see it in our long section. You can make it bigger, but I do not recommend that. But the problem comes here. Now, when I'm coming towards the bottom of my uh, platform, the pipe is above ground. So what I can do is I can insert a structure to break that pipe so that it's not such a long piece of pipe and I can angle it based on my slope and it will be interpolated between the structures, structure depth and pipe, right? So I can go and select what I want, let's see what we will use. Let's just go with the manhole, right? And all I'm going to do is now go and select the profile view. So I want it to be in this long section. And I want to divide this pipe here. And once I do that, it might look like nothing happened. Right? It's going to ask me to select an insertion point. A lot of the users forget about this. You need to click where you want the structure to be. And this is the result. Now, if you did make a mistake and it was actually quite high, all you can do is select the pipes and drag them down until you are happy. Or once you do run the adjust invert 
uh, tool for IDAS and Civil 3D, it will update and drop it below the ground. So you can see very nice, uh, quite easy to use. Again, I can go and use the rest of the functions that I've used previously. So for example, swap structures, maybe I want to change that. I don't want to use that structure. Maybe I made a mistake or something changed in the analytical model. I selected select the wrong one. Let's go to junction. I click on the structure that I want, hit enter, and it has resolved it. I could multiple select structures as well, so that is not a problem. But you can see how user friendly this is. We also have a long section that has been generated. You can see that uh, we need to just update a few things here, and it will populate as we are generating our design. So we now have an idea as to how you would create a long section. Now, the next thing that normally pops up in the reticulation uh, design is that of the water or house connections. Now, how do we do that? Now, the great thing with Devotech IDAS, it has this function and it makes it so easy. Let me show you. So I can go to the water tab in IDAS ribbon and I can go and select house connections. Now, when we do that, we can decide as to whether it's going to be a what type of class or pipe and whether it's going to be a single house or a double house connection right if you're not familiar with this you will see it in a bit it will make a bit more sense uh, simply a double house connection is where a connection is as to where two houses feed into and a single house is just for one house now you can see we've got a lot of parcels or plots or herbs whatever you want to use and I can go and select where I would like to drop them in. And I want to put a double house connection, for example, there because those two houses can feed off it. And I can carry on moving. I will put one there so it will serve those two plots. And I will continue doing this as I would go across my site. Now, I'm not going to do all, of course, because it's, it's repetitive. And a webinar is just to get you up and running. So here we are, I think that is enough to demonstrate my point. Of course, if I had a single house connection, I would need to change it to a single house connection. Also, you might see sometimes that you might want your pipe or your connection to connect to a different pipe. That's why I'm hovering around to show you that depending on how your pipe network is laid out, you might need or have a better option to connect it. But by default, it connects it perpendicularly. Now, what happens if I wanted it to connect to a different pipe or something of that sort? I can definitely do that. Like, for example, that plot there, I want it to connect to that pipe there. So I can go back to house connection. And in this case, I will use a single house because it is just one. So a 25 mil should be good, right? And I can go and change the structure style. Again, you will not have this default out of civil 3D. This was created by David Tech for this, that you can download from their website for free. So I can go and select the pipe, as you've seen. I select the pipe, and then I can go and select where I want to place the connection. I will just snap there for now, and there we are. So if you wanted the connections to be specified or connected to a specific pipe, at a specific location, you will see that you can do that using that function. So inserting the house connections is pretty, pretty easy. Now, another thing with the house connections, if we zoom in, you can see they're kind of in an angle. It does happen sometimes. And you can see, I'm showing you quite a few, meaning that there's more than one, there's multiple. And what we would like it to do is to look like that, but to go and rotate each one, and if you, especially in this model, you get models way bigger than this, it's still going to be quite tedious. So can we, or do we have a way where we can edit it or rotate, rotate them in a much more quicker way? Now, IDAS has made a tool where you could rotate this based on the angle 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw a line. So the first step is to draw a line that is perpendicular to wherever you are. And we are now going to use the angular option to measure what angle of rotation do we need. Right, so I'm going to just go and select that variable to that. And you can see it's 310. So if I rotate this by 310, I should get it smack bang along that um, parcel or that earth line. So IDAS has a function called rotate structures, and I will, it allows you to rotate multiple at the same time. As long as they are along the same or they have the same rotation angle. So you can see these three do, and I'm going to type in 310. And once I do that, there we are. You can actually see all of them have rotated correctly. Right, so this again, from a drafting perspective, so the people that are the draft persons on these calls, this will save you a ton of time because imagine doing it one by one. I used to hate doing that. Uh, and surprisingly enough, it was always for water networks that the text and all of these type of things needed to be rotated manually. At least now we have a function for the structures that will allow us to rotate them quite quickly. Okay, so we've got our pipe network in, we've put in the structures, we've put in the house connections. Now we need to analyze the water network. So let's dive in here. So here we are, we go to the pipe manager now. I does analytical engine is under the pipe manager and we can see the profiles we can see the structures we can see the conduits and so on you can see if i click or i click on connect to water source you can see i called it ws i changed the name and i can specify the pressure head the pattern meaning if i have a multiplier factor and so on i can do all of that in here you can see i've got the bends as well as well as the fittings Okay, so all of that has been tabulated, listed quite nicely. If I had fire hydrants, it will be there. I deleted that one. You can see there's all of these single house connections, right? We do need to put in a demand. A demand can be specified by the type of parcel or by me typing in a direct value, which I will do here. So I've selected the entire table. And what I can do is if I go to edit values, I will say specify demand or demand and I can put it in liters per second. So let's say for a single house connection, it is going to be 0 0.07 liters per second. And you can see all of that data has updated. Again, if I did have a pattern, I could assign it to that. Now let's go to the double house connection. And again, we are going to assign a pattern or demand to it rather. And this is going to be double. So 0 0.14, right? And again, it's in liters per second, and we hit OK. And now you can see all the values have now updated. You can see also tabulates the nodes. If you have anything that's unlinked, it will be un unmatched. So everything is looking good. Now, we need to specify the roughness coefficient. That's why we've got that red flag there. And I would use Darcy Vashbach, right? So we can go. I will use, yeah, probably 0015 will be good. Hit that and wait, OK. Again, if you were using Shazi or Hazen Williams, you can go and select that and use the appropriate coefficient. Now, the lovely thing about IDAS is they have a great help file that's built in. So if I go to find and I want to go and find the roughness coefficients, what the values are suggested, it is actually in the help file. So it will search the help file for you. It might take a few secs, depending on the word, uh, right? And you can see it picks up Manning's coefficient, uh, roughness coefficient, and you can see for water networks, we've got a section on roughness coefficient. And if I click on there, you can see it will guide you as to the type of material and what the coefficient should be based on Hazen Williams, Darcy, or um, Manning's, which is this. Right, you can see all of them are here. You can also investigate the minor losses and so on. So, if you have been using the central drainage manual or the blue book as it's called, this should be familiar for you. Uh, of course, again, the help file is absolutely brilliant. 
So you can go and have a look at what you would like. The library is where you can create a pattern. So for example, if we click new pattern and if I just hit OK, I can give it a name, I can give it a number of interval. So let's say we are going to be using 24 hours and we can now go and specify the multiplier values, which are fully editable. So you know that maybe at a certain time of the day, the demand is double or it's 1.3 times. You can go and specify a demand and then assign it to the demand value that you have and you would get a great analytical value. Now you can see the pattern is here. I can go and assign it if I want. I'm going to leave it out because I didn't really think about it. I just wanted to show you. But look at the ribbon on the top for guidance if you do get lost. You can see the velocity is currently zero because we haven't run the analytical engine yet. right? You can specify the minor losses if you would like as well. So for example, if I go to minor loss, I can go and specify whatever value I want. Um, if you do know the value, I will just use 0 0.12 for now. And you can see everything does update, right? So again, you have a full view as to what is happening. If you want to know where the velocity value and stuff came from, it will be from analysis. You can see the minimum is 0 0.7 and max is 2.5 meters per second, right? And again, the house connections, you can also take a look at what is happening there, right? So I can edit all of those values on the top. But let's go run an analysis and see what happens. So if I click peak flow, we see it failed. Now, why did it fail? Let's go and see. So I can go to the reports option and I go to analysis report and it tells me these two have the same end nodes. That is a problem, meaning that it could be a duplication in the actual network. So it says pipe P172 has the same start and end nodes. That is not a good thing. That can be a normal CAD error. It does happen sometimes. And you can also see on the screen, it is giving me input error and then three digits. So I've got the error that is triple two, and I've got an error that is 200. So I think if I solve triple two, 200 will automatically go away. Let's see. So we now need to go and find those pipes that had the problem. And in civil 3, I'll go have a look at the list of my pipes. I know one was P172. And if I right click and I say select, you can see that is why it looks off. I mean, how can I have a pipe that's small, right? So that is a big problem. I'm going to go and delete that. So I go delete structure. And I will hit the pipe I want to keep. And let's see what happens. So once we do that, there we are, because it makes no sense to have such a tiny piece there. That's, that doesn't make sense, right? So I flagged that one, and I think there was another pipe. I'm not sure uh, what it was. What was the number, I think? Let's just go see. I think it was 222 or somewhere around there, 219, right? And if I go to select, let's zoom out. You can see same story on this end. So this is a quick way to find where your pipes are. And I can go and use the IDAS delete structure. So I select delete structure. I select the pipe that I would like to keep. And boom, right? You will see it has fixed that. So let's go and see if this will actually help us or if our analysis will now work. Again, I can go and fiddle around a bit more with this if I like, but for now, let's see. All right, so the house connections, I mean, the problem or what happened there was I deleted a few and that's what happened. I did not delete the structure. So let's go to back to the pipe manager. So this was our analytical engine, hydraulic parameters. And what we will do, again, you can see we're using Darcy Waschbach and the time energy, I can specify the date, start time, the end time. Uh, we normally leave it from midnight to midnight. Uh, that's the full 24 hours. That's why you see that zero, zero there. Of course, you can go and specify the actual date if you'd like. 
and I will click analyze the peak flow and now let's see if we get an error we are good there is no failed so that is great so let's go and see and now you can see the analysis is done and then of course you can go and have a look at all of the the pressures but now you can see i am getting a negative pressure there that is not good so i thought i'll do this a bit differently because a lot of people don't understand the analysis um, even i myself get confused sometimes but we didn't specify a pressure head from the water source itself so let's say it was 10 meters and now if i run a peak flow let's see there we go no failed if you don't see failed you're good right but you need to still interrogate the the results and you can see now all of the pressures are positive because of course if you have a negative pressure the water is not going to flow into your pipe or out of your tap that's a big problem so you need a sustainable pressure based on your calcs again those of you that are actual specialized in this will know more about this but i hope that those that are not that clued up this made a bit more sense for you last but not least once we have done with the analytical part of the design we then need to go and derive the quantities and this is so easy right so we've got a question called bomb it's not what you think <laughs> it stands for bill of materials it's based on sabs 1200 where you can go and set your own diameters uh, and your dimensions if needed and what i will do is i will click calculate and as you can see in the bottom of my screen it is busy going through all of those pipes and so on once it is done i can do now have all of the data look at that it calculated the quantity the volumes how many number of pipes the lengths compacted backfill and so on excavation lengths length summaries giving you the total number of pipes as well as the pipes and the structure tables so you can see it will total up everything for you and so when you are doing your boq uh, this will make your life much more easier especially when you are ordering or you're getting pricing as a consultant to put out for tender now what i did was i exported that to excel so let's go into the water or open up the excel sheet called water and all of that same data is now available to you right so if you wanted to include it in a report if you wanted to even change the display it is excel after all so if you don't like the color scheme that it has you could change the full do whatever you like be as creative as you want so that is it for the water segment now if you wanted to look at it in a much more detailed view go to devotech.com right you can create a free account and log in to get the training on demand videos it's absolutely free and you can see there's a whole list of different topics especially the ones i've covered so far in this series but in much more detail like i cannot get to all of this in an hour with you so i gave you the crux of it but you can go and watch these step by step uh, especially if you need to upskill and it will make much more sense uh, anton has done a fantastic job here and have a look and see how you would add certain things how you would get more familiar with it and you can also repeat it of course you can also revisit this webinar if you would uh, prefer so in closing let's look at today's key takeaways and how we can help you so first of all what we did was we took the polylines that were drawn and we converted it to a pipe network in a few steps that shouldn't be sewer that should be water that's a typo on my end from the last one and thereafter we took we created the long section by selecting the first structure and the last either structure or pipe in a branch and we generated an alignment for it and got the long section also i did remind you that you would still need to check that your vertices are broken by using map cleanup otherwise you will get analytical errors that is across the board for a lot of the design analytical software 
And when we do have the long section, there's multiple ways that you can edit it. You could delete a pipe, you could lower it, you could swap a structure, you could add a structure and so on. Thereafter, we looked at creating the house connections where we simply used the house connection function in ILAD. We specified whether it's a double house or single house, and we clicked the location and it automatically connected it to the main pipe. We also looked at how you could specify the pipe for it to connect in case of certain cases, you don't want it to connect to a specific pipe for a specific reason. Both can be done. Thereafter, we decided that, hey, we are ready. We would like to analyze our water network. I troubleshooted a few areas with you where there was duplicates or there was pipes or structures that did not make sense. And we addressed that. Again, we also looked at the help file. The help file that's built in, if you search the error code, it normally tells you what to do. So there's enough, enough resources for you to uh, troubleshoot, right? Once we ran the analysis and we got it to where we wanted, we also checked the pressures. It was negative. We sorted it out by adding some head to it, and it was pretty good after that. Once we were happy with it, we then needed to derive the quantities. This is where we simply went to the bomb manager and we exported it as per SABS 1200. We then took that data, exported it to Excel, and now it was ours that we could use for quantification and so on. So a full trip from zero to hero here, right? And again, we used Civil 3D and IDAS. I promise you, IDAS is a very, very good tool for civil engineering. It is quite a game changer, especially if this is what you do every day. All right, so how can we help you? How can I help you? Let's have a quick uh, roundabout. So I mentioned this in the start, we solve our customers' problems through digital transformation, helping them to design and make a better world. Now, being a technical specialist, being an engineer, and being a person in this sphere, I thought that there are three ways that you, you could attain help. The first one is by yourself. And this is by using something that we call CAD Learning. It is an online portal with a lot of the Autodesk software, so Civil 3D is on there, Revit's on there, Inventor's on there, AutoCAD, uh, 3DS Max, vehicle tracking, I mean, there's a lot of lists. I think there's about 50 on there uh, where there's pre-recorded classes online that you would watch and learn on the go. This is available 24 seven. So if you can't sleep at 2 a.m. and you want to go and do design, I hope that's not your life, but please don't. You could rather do something a bit more relaxed. But if you need to learn on the go, or you're working quite late and trying to figure out things, CAD learning is your go-to thing. Right, so if you're interested in that, again, I'll have my details up in a bit. You can always hit me up. I use it personally as well because we give so many courses that sometimes we are human. We are bound to forget a few things. Second one is let us show you. So you can come in here to class. Um, we or we can come to you. It's up to you. And we can do training in an in-person environment as long as it permits. So Civil 3D, Revit, IDAS, AutoCAD, whatever you would need. Uh, if you just need the basic, maybe you're in a director's position and you just need to have an overview, we can do a Kickstarter with you. But if you are an advanced designer or advanced user and you want specific topics, again, hit me up, send me what you want to cover. We can create a custom tailored um, course specifically for your needs. So nothing's cast in stone, we will try our best to help you achieve your design ambition. So that's the second one. And the one that I also like, or probably is the favorite, it's let's do it together, where you would have a project that you would really like to apply BIM technologies or certain technologies on, and we work together on it. I would train your team, I would work with you on it, and we can take it further. Of course, if it's too complex, you can still reach out to us, chat, and we can advise you accordingly. This is all based on our IADOP methodology. Uh, we assess your current situation, we educate you so that you fish for yourself, meaning that once you get used to how things work, we want you to be independent and keep going. So it gives us also uh, more time to make impact on other companies and so on. But again, we are still here in the consulting perspective. We have a lot of 
clients that we've been dealing with quite a lot. So we will help you from a consulting perspective to facilitate positive change management. If you would like to follow us or reach out to us, those are all of our company handles. So LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Again, this webinar will be uploaded to YouTube soon, so you can access it at a later stage. And of course, if you want to reach out to me directly, anything civil infrastructure design and scan to boom, I am your guy. Uh, my email is shaeb at bakermains.com or you can hit me up on LinkedIn, I don't mind. Those are all of the techs that I'm used to. Primary focus is the ones that I'm pretty good at, I use quite a bit. The secondary, I pull them in when I need to. And the other focuses, I've actually used them quite a bit. Some of them are a bit new, but I can help you with consulting, software training, scan to BIM, or reality capture, drone to design, uh, process analysis in your business, in your company, in your department, demos, presenting at webinars or events that you feel that we could help you out with. Webinars like we've seen here today. And of course, if you want to grab a coffee sometime and have a chat, you can always hit me up. We can definitely set that up soon. So I'm going to have a quick um, look at the chat box if there are any questions. Uh, if you have any comments or if you don't have any questions and you just want to share as to how you felt the session was, by all means, use the chat box. I will give me a second or so so I could see if I have missed any questions or what has popped up and I will tackle them and then we will close it off. So let me have a quick scroll here. Okay, so there's one here. Can you please recap how you would break the vertices in a line? All right. Okay. I would strongly suggest you look at, I think, part three, because I'm going to explain it, but you would have to see it to understand. But part three on the YouTube channel, I think it focused on stormwater design. Go and have a look at that. I showed it on there. But in a nutshell, what you need to do is, if you have a crossing line, it needs to be broken at that position. Meaning that if you have two lines going across each other, there needs to be a vertice at the center. Now, generally when we are drawing, that does not happen and we need to break it manually. So in the software, we've got a GIS function. It's used quite a bit. It's also prevalent in Map 3D, which is built into Civil 3D. It's called the Map Cleaner. And what this does is it will break crossing objects. It will delete undershoots. It will delete duplicates and so on. But the most common one is to delete or break crossing objects so that it will insert them or it will insert a node at each intersection point. That is very critical, especially if you are doing an analysis for pipe networks, right? So again, I'm sure that it's pretty difficult to understand. So you would need to go and have a look at that part three video and you will get an idea as to how you would do it. But thank you for that question. Okay, another one is, where are the other pipe networks in your model? Good question. As you had seen, if you have played a close eye onto what I was doing, those layers, I actually froze them. So what that means is I didn't want to see those networks and it will also improve the performance of my model. So they, yes, they were there. I mean, you saw the polylines, you saw the layers. Uh, so you don't have to have one model just for sewer, one model just for water, one model just for stormwater. What you could do is you could create a master model and use data shortcuts to link each pipe in. That way, it will allow you to manage your model performance better. And we will see how that goes. I mean, data shortcuts is much more streamlined. The model size doesn't get too sluggish and it works really, really well. You can even use extras, extras and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different options that you can use, but that is my answer on that. Uh, there's another one here. Good afternoon. Our company found this post on LinkedIn. We entered quite late. Is it possible to rewatch, review previous webinar videos? We would really appreciate that. 
Yes, 100%. Uh, this will be uploaded to our Baker Vans YouTube channel. So because you are registered for this webinar, you will receive a link telling you that the recording is now updated or uploaded. Please click the link and you can go and watch this at your own leisure. I will also post it on LinkedIn. So if you haven't followed me on LinkedIn, I would suggest you do so because I will post it and you can then also go and access it from there and maybe tag the rest of your company if they did not make it. So I'll just leave this slide on while I take the rest of the questions here. But uh, thank you for that. Again, it will be uploaded to YouTube. Okay, there is something here about data shortcuts, but I, I believe I just answered that right now. So uh, basically they wanted to know if you could link in pipe networks. Yes, you can. Again, you need to think as a designer, what will be much more better based on the hardware that you have, because the hardware is very important. The size of the model is also important and how you can manage that is extremely crucial. Okay, so have a look and see what is the best way you would feel to manage it. Uh, if you do get stuck, I can advise you. So maybe drop me an email, we can see or take a look. Okay, let me take one more scroll. Okay, that is it. I do not see any other questions. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, it was good to be live after such a long time. I wish you have a great Friday further. Do watch out for the recording and definitely for part six, which is going to be the finale. That is the visual component. Uh, last year, well, my LinkedIn kind of exploded or my emails and stuff like that exploded because people really enjoyed the visual component to see how you would take CAD, like what you had seen here, and bring it into a 3D rich environment. Uh, Trust me, you don't want to miss part six. So do keep an eye out for them. So thank you very much, everyone. Have an awesome Friday. And I will catch you all soon for the next installment. Have a good one.